a lot has been said about the visit by the Chief Justice to State House, yeah, the official seat of the President, for lengthy discussions. Yeah, we were told this discussion was to iron out the differences between the judiciary and the executive. And very important, this meeting was called for, not by Ruto, it was called for by the Chief Justice, Martha Kome. Now a lot has been said about this very dramatic and in my opinion unconstitutional move. But there's a very important point that very few have yet to see. Very, very important. Actually, the visit to State House is one of two moves that have sealed <laughs> yes, I use that word that have sealed the fate very negative fate of our dear judiciary. And I'm going to explain in detail and completely convince you that this is a fact. There are two things our judiciary have done that has sealed their feet. Point of no return. Now I appreciate that we are all in a hurry. I appreciate that. We hardly have the time and I really appreciate those who take the time to ensure that you never miss a Kumekucha video. Yeah, those are not the people I'm addressing. I'm addressing those youngsters who are in a big hurry. Come on, Chris, get on with the point. I'm addressing those shallow minds, the minds that are not deep. Because I'm afraid shallow minds cannot see yeah, what I'm trying to explain here, with all due respect to them. I know we're in the generation of TikTok. Quick, quick 30 second, 60 second videos. Yeah. Which is okay. But we need to appreciate that this life is not for the shallow. If you're shallow, hey, I really sympathize with you. You need to be deep to understand a lot of these things. For things to be clear, one needs to be deep. So my apologies to that group of my subscribers, my very sincere apologies, but I'm sorry, this one is deep, but it is also true. You can call it a prediction, although in my opinion it is not a prediction. It is just simple analysis of the facts in the public domain while taking a quick peek at the spiritual, because you can never go wrong once you understand what is happening in the spiritual. Because it will always, without doubt, happen here in the physical. If it has happened in the spiritual, it has already happened in the physical. It's just a matter of time. So there you are. The headline is Judiciary Quisha Maleno. And I'm going to prove it to you. But before we dive into that, let us look at something which is directly linked in my opinion. Yeah, for those who look into the spiritual. Snow in Kenya? How now? <laughs> now this is not fake news. This is not propaganda. This is not fiction. Those who travel along the Nakuru Nairobi Highway recently had to stop, to hug, to touch, to kick real snow. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. For those familiar with the area, this happened in the Nyambari area, Kiambu County. And very fascinating, the local villagers or the locals were bored. They were probably saying in Kikuyu, Ah, watu wa Nairobi, kichwa yao ni mzuri kweli. Ni ngoma, ngoma. Because grown men, some of them almost kumekucha Chris's age, were coming out of their vehicles and hugging snow. Now the villagers being bored is an important clue. 
it means this has happened there before. They have seen it. It's not a big deal. And indeed cases of snow in Kenya have been reported before. Our Met Department calls it aggressive hailstorm. Yeah, but it's genuine snow. And you know the vast majority of Kenyans who have never seen snow. Even those of us who have traveled widely. Yeah, because you reach a place, it's summer. So people coming out to hug snow, kick it, touch it, in my opinion, is not ngoma. It's not madness. It is a spiritual sign that we are about to witness some very unprecedented things in the dear motherland. Completely unprecedented. Things that are not supposed to be here. Things that have never been expected here like snow are going to unfold shortly. Right, back to the judiciary. There is a very important foundational point we must grasp first before we proceed any further. And let us start like this. We are in the season of judgment. And that means that one of the key institutions that must face judgment and exposure is the judiciary. And the judiciary has to be one of those institutions that is very close to the heart of Almighty God. Justice, the judiciary, has to be close. Please allow me to share with you a recent revelation I got that blew my mind and is still blowing my mind. Because I didn't know this before. I have never known it in all my years on this earth. But recently, I discovered it. The spiritual realm is a judiciary system. I'm sure you've heard of the term legal ground. Legal grounds in the spiritual realm. It is also in law, by the way. But you see, the law copies everything from the spiritual. Yeah, via a book called the Holy Bible. It is very rare that a person can be convicted yeah, by the testimony of one witness. Very rare. And that is in the Bible. It is in the very first law on earth, the law of Moses. And in this life, when something very good or very bad or whatever is about to happen to you, it has to clear legal ground. Spiritually, let me give you evidence. In the book of Job, there is a very curious incident yeah, where it says the devil was in heaven. How now? How can the devil enter heaven? Actually, he was in a court in heaven with accusations, as usual, against somebody who Almighty God was very pleased about and that is his work accuser prosecutor in chief ah uh, this man is not faithful take away all that wealth and protection you have given him and you'll see he's going to cast you in your face that's what the prosecutor said the judge said sour go ahead and do what you want to do to this man but don't touch his soul be like his ungumingi don't kill him and you know the story. You know what happened to Job. And there was legal ground. I will not go into that today. But it has got something to do with fear. Fear is to be feared. It's a doorway. Okay? And what you fear will very likely happen to you. It is a spiritual law. Bottom line, there are cases and legal ground hurdles in the spiritual realm all the time. Constantly. Don't misunderstand me. God is all powerful, all knowing, all everything. However, he does not trash his own constitution. And indeed, even in law here on earth, there are special circumstances. Somebody has worked very hard, is about to reap the rewards. But then the prosecutor in chief comes and says, No, this man's grandfather murdered. We have legal ground to block him. And yes, there's the blood of Jesus, 
But this man thinks the Bible is a fairy tale. Please allow me to leave that controversial issue there. Bottom line, how do you judge a nation and you leave out the judiciary? How? How can that happen? How the Kenyan judiciary finished itself in two neat moves. Wakajimaliza kabisa. That's what we're discussing today. And now I need to reveal the second move the judiciary made that has sealed her fate. Lawyer Hamed Nasir Abdullahi was blocked, banned from appearing before the Supreme Court, which of course is unconstitutional. Whichever way you want to look at it, it is against the spirit and letter of the Constitution. And what was he banned for? He was banned for what he said. And what he's saying, is it true or just lies? Well, if it is lies, there is a very easy way to deal with it. Sue the man for defamation. And so, this man who has spoiled the good name of our honorable judges, Matusi 24-7, there is a simple legal solution. Yeah, take him to court. But they won't do that. Why? <laughs> why will they not do that? That's a very simple solution. I will tell you why. And I'll tell you with wisdom. It has something to do with the history of this senior counsel, well-known controversial lawyer, Ahmed Nasir Abdul Hai. And I'll tell you that super fascinating story in a minute. First, allow me to acknowledge our sponsors for today's show, which is the Kumekucha Chris Channel sponsorship segment. There are some of you out there who have used this opportunity and they've managed to sell plots, double digit million. There are some of you out there who have wanted to move products or cause awareness and they've sponsored a show and they have gotten very positive results. For only $118 or Kenya shillings 19000 you can be able to do that. Or even for only $61 or 9900 Kenya shillings, you can be a co-sponsor. That means you sponsor a video with somebody else who I will find. You will not dominate that video, but you'll still create awareness. You can see details on your screens right now. And what you need to do today to sell that plot or create awareness for whatever it is that you do yeah, by simply sponsoring. And of course you're also supporting this channel and the work I do here, yeah, which I believe is a noble task, my opinion, yeah, and those of a few others. Okay, the judgment of the judiciary system in Kenya. Now, despite a very humble beginning, because lawyer Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi went to Mandera Primary School in the remote, arid, northeastern part of the country. But he did so well that he made it to Nairobi School, yeah, the prestigious Nairobi School, started by Muzungu colonialists. And he decided to study law at the Nairobi University. And then from there, his climb was swift. Too swift, very swift. Make no mistake about it. Whatever you think of this lawyer, he is very sharp. Very sharp. Able to think three, four, five, six, ten steps ahead. And don't forget, we are discussing why it may not be a good idea to sue Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi for defamation. When you end up in court, or you have a matter in court, usually things are elephant for you. Yeah? And so you have to choose your legal representation very carefully. You have to choose your lawyer carefully if you want to win. Because you see, this court being run by humans is not like the same court in the spiritual realm. This one, there are human issues anywhere in the world. And so if you want to win, you choose a lawyer who understands the politics of the judiciary. 
That is the truth. And this is how Bwana Abdullahi has been able to climb up the ranks too quickly. Because of his knowledge of this politics of the judiciary. Information is power. And therefore he uses his information to put up a case in your favor that will win the day. Allow me to leave it there. And so taking a man like this to court is suicide. <laughs> he will talk and he will talk and at the end of the talking much more damage will be done not only to you as a judge but also to your colleagues because of the information he has. I hope you can now see yeah, why targeting such a lawyer yeah, banning him from the Supreme Court is actually setting a trap for yourself and the judiciary. That is what it really is. He has too much information. And to make matters worse, this is not an ordinary Kenyan with information. This is a trained, sharp, legal mind. He will know how to separate the information he has. Hearsay, admissible in court, will make my case stronger. Blah, 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 blah. This is a dangerous man. Now, to understand the direction where I'm going, yeah, it is also important to note that a judiciary can finish itself, destroy itself, cause irreparable damage to itself, yeah, by taking a stand at a time of upheaval, political upheaval. And I will give you a short story to illustrate this. It has happened before in Kenya. And this story revolves around a very controversial historical character of the country called Kenya. Called, called Roson Mbogwa Masharia. Have you ever heard of him? Allow me to jog your memory. This was the single witness who sent Jomo Kenyatta to jail in the famous Kapenguria 6 trial of the 1950s. You see, the powerful colonial government at that time read the political signs wrongly. They didn't see what was happening, yeah, which is very similar to what is happening in Kenya today as we speak. And they believed that the Muzungu would rule Kenya forever. Kenya would remain a colony of Her Majesty. Or is it his majesty these days? Forever! And the Mzungus wanted to fix Kenyatta. Yeah. And the five other accused persons. Why? They wanted to smash all opposition to colonial rule. They wanted to make an example so that anybody who would think of opposing the colonial government would henceforth think twice or even three times before they do anything stupid. And so they went to Kenyatta's political party. Yes, you heard me right. His own political party, Kenya African Union, which was a moderate party. They didn't believe in violence. They believed in discussion and ruling together the colonialists, being given a bit of power, you know, not total independence. And this Roson Bogwa Masharia was Secretary of Kau, one of the few educated Africans at that time. And he had even worked as a clerk in government the colonial government. He was one of the few Africans around who could read and write. And that's why he became Secretary of Kau. And the Mzungus approached Roson and they coached him. And then they gave him a deal. Roson was coached along with other witnesses in quotes. Yeah. And the other witnesses asked for plots. Some of them were given plots at the coast. But Roson Masharia asked for cash. And apart from a good sum of money, he wanted to be taken maju, and therefore immediately after the conviction of Jomo Kenyatta after the trial, he was taken to the UK for university education, yeah, his reward. And Roson Masharia told the court that he was there when Jomo Kenyatta gave him an oath for Mau Mau. Now you need to remember, Jomo Kenyatta had no connection with the Mau Mau. In fact, the Mau Mau freedom fighters threatened Jomo Kenyatta several times because Mau Mau were radical 
Jomo Kenyatta was talking to the Mzungus and therefore the Maumau saw him as a traitor to the cause because Jomo Kenyatta never talked about returning the land of the Kenyans to Kenyans. Yeah, Mzungus giving up their land and returning it to the rightful owners. Jomo never touched on that topic. And so because of Roson Masharia's false testimony, Jomo Kenyatta was jailed. But when Bwana Masharia returned to Kenya after his university education, when he returned from the United Kingdom in 1958, about six years later, things had changed. Bindu Vichenjanga. And the same colonial government took him to court and charged him with perjury. Bila Kizungumingi giving false testimony in a court of law, telling lies in a court of law. And the same people who rewarded him with university education in the United Kingdom and a lot of cash jailed him for two years. But in that environment, exposure, it emerged. Even the judge of that Kapinguria 6 case was in constant communication uh, during the case with the governor of Kenya at the time. So even the judge was being coached. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what? And now you can understand, at the time Kenya was getting her independence, nobody stood up and said, No! How can Jomo Kenyatta be in politics? He was imprisoned. Alikuwa jela. He was sent there by the colonial government. How can he even vie for any political seat? Nobody stood up to dare say that. Why? Because of the exposure. The colonial judiciary was finished. Even legal experts were asking, how can you jail somebody when only one witness has linked him to Mau Mau? How can you jail somebody with only one piece of evidence from one witness? It did not happen with one major headline. Small, small things happen here and there, and then finally exposure. Now, fascinating aside, Malipo in Akwanga Hapa Hapa. Roson Masharia lived a very miserable life. In 1996, some journalists went to interview him, and they found him living in a dusty, dirty house with mud walls and a rusty Mabati roof. The house did not even have electricity. The house was in his village in Mudarumbi, Thika, very close to Katundu town and five kilometers away from Jomo Kenyatta's house, Jomo Kenyatta's village house, Ichawere. What? Yani, he betrayed a man from his own village. Not only that, he betrayed his neighbor. That is human nature for you. But where did all the money go? The money that he was given by the Mzungus. An absolute fortune. And this education in the UK? Ilimpeleka wapi? Eh? Roson Masharia died on 5th December 2008 along Thicker Road. He was hit by Anduthi. He was hit by a motorbike and died on the spot. What? He was 96 years old. A man who went to school very early. At 96 he's struggling to cross the thicker highway. Where's his car? Where's his reasonable house? Yeah. Somewhere in Nairobi or even in Thika. Malipo in Akwanga, Hapa, Hapa. And trust me when I tell you, this time round for the judiciary, it will be worse than in the 50s. Why? Because we're in the season of judgment. Somebody goes to court, an innocent ordinary Kenyan. Money exchanges hands and they go to prison and they're innocent. You see, even these judges, some of them who are very healthy, do not know how the inside of a jail in Kenya looks like. They have no idea what the conditions are. But they are quick to send somebody there. They have received money. I jail you. They don't want to be questioned. If a lawyer says some negative things about them, they ban that lawyer from appearing before them. Please try and look at this through the eyes of Almighty God. 
all those innocent people in Kenyan jails. All those cases where people have died waiting for judgment. A judge postpones a case for four years. <laughs> that has been normal in Kenya. Their people have gone to court. And right now their great-grandchildren are going to court over the same matter. It started in the 70s. It's still ongoing. Hey? And it appears we still don't know even half the story. The case of Judge Said Chitembwe yeah, gave us a glimpse. Mike Sonko exposed him. Judge Fulani atachukua kamili. And so on and so forth. We all had the recorded conversation of a judge from our judiciary talking and saying things which you'll never believe. We all had that. Which is only a tip of the iceberg. You see the Kenyan judiciary is like a secret society. They protect each other. Hmm? If you try and take a judge down the consequences on you can be devastating. They can finish you. Yeah? Because you have taken a judge to court. And who is the judge over your case? <laughs> Who will judge your case? Yes, you have taken a judge to court. Yes, you want to remove a judge. But who is the judge over that case? A member of the same society. How do you think he's going to make the judgment? In your favor, do you think? <laughs> what? And so if you're a new lawyer, you have to make a decision. Either you join the club and become a successful lawyer, or you refuse to join the club and you fail. The whole system is rigged against an honest person who wants to do only things that will stand the test of time. You can't succeed. You can't. Not against this system. And so that is what is being judged. And trust me, this thing will not go away. And it's not because of Chris Kumekucha. No! It's not because of what Ruto has done and said. No! It is the season. And it is the time. And nobody can escape. Even if you're a powerful judge. Even if you're untouchable. I'm so sorry can't escape. Of course I'm well aware of the fact that at the moment public sympathy is against the executive and for the judiciary. I'm very much well aware of that. However, when I look at things spiritually, the Kenyan judiciary, eh, I only see trouble after trouble after trouble. Time to pay! has come and no force on earth or anywhere can stop it. My heart goes out to all those innocent Kenyans who are behind bars. My heart goes out to all those Kenyans who have lost their lives, who have grown old, who have gotten heart attacks because of our judiciary. But I am consoled in the fact that time is up for the Kenyan judiciary. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.